Hello, everybody. This is Ben Herman coming at you to discuss my uh, annual predictions for the HSNCT and how Pennsylvania tunes will do at uh, Wisbon Nationals of HSNCT this year. So this is for 2023. I usually start these with kind of an overview of how the quiz bowl season went in the state uh, before um, we go into the predictions. This year was a little bit of a disappointment in some ways. Um, just not a lot of events were taking place. Um, hosts and college teams that used to host high school events just collapsed. Uh, there was almost no activity in the state after uh, January and um, in some ways, I would say the Pennsylvania circuit's no longer existing um, because there's really no connection between the Pittsburgh area schools and the eastern half of the state anymore, um, as there's just no tournaments in between them, and they're they're playing completely separate, other than national season. Therefore, um, I don't really know what the future will hold for the state. Um, I am optimistic that it will build back again. Uh, with a new generation of people um, and I hope to have maybe a small role as, as a kind of a elder statesman but certainly not as involved as I used to be. I know a lot of other people that have moved on and moved that way to other states to kind of feel that way. Um, so I have confidence that you know there will be a new era of Pennsylvania Quiz Bowl um, rising uh, from this year um, but it also feels like a last rodeo in some ways. It's an interesting year um, and that means that uh, this tournament will be an interesting one for Pennsylvania's teams. Uh, we have 12 teams going, representing eight schools. And I will uh, share my screen and bring up the field map um, and start the predictions. So I'm going to go from uh, north to south this year instead of west to east. So we'll start with Berwick. Um, representing Northeastern Pennsylvania, coached by uh, the 2022-2023 Coach of the Year, Todd Gunther, and uh, still a very young team. A lot of rising players um, that that um, probably are not finished products yet, but they're getting better. I know Jack and Josephine have put up some pretty good scores in the past. Um, they'll be sending two teams this year. Um, their B team was on the standby list and got into the field at, at uh, the 11th hour. Uh, so it's good that they're going to be playing. Um, you look at Berwick and you definitely can see that like their power rate, for instance, is not in line with the team you'd expect to do, especially while well ages in CT. That being said, Todd has been around for a long time, and he's a very good coach. Um, they have pretty good nade control for a team of their caliber, um, and they have played in some very good fields. And, um, you know, they, they've never been a team that's threatened to win any tournaments or things like that this year, but they performed pretty well, and, and they seem to work really well as a team, too. Um, I've seen them collaborate on bonuses and really pull some good um, gets that way. Um, last year they went four and six at HSNCT. I'd predict the same this year, a stronger four and six, um, and hopefully a breakthrough towards um, that five and five or playoff level uh, coming up in uh, 23-4. And for those who are casual or, or need a reminder, uh, you have there's 10 preliminary matches. You have to go uh, at least six and four, have a winning record to make the playoff phase of the tournament. And this year, since the field's about 300 teams, uh, there'll probably be about 100 teams to make the playoff. So we'll say four and six for Berwick A. Berwick B, I assume, are like freshmen or in, in their case, like even eighth graders. Um, since they're uh, seven for 12 like at middle school, high school, like they're both coached by Todd. Um, and they... Um, they probably won't do very well. Uh, I'll say two and eight. Um, but it's always good to get the experience, and it's good to just have fun. Like, even if they don't win that many games, they're going to have a time of their life and have a great memory for many years to come. So I'm glad that they're in the field, um, and I hope they prove me wrong. Uh, so, yeah, four and six for A and two and eight for B. Scrolling down next, the next most north team is Cedar Crest, one team. Cedar Crest are currently ranked number one in the GPQB poll, and that's where they're going to stay. Um, I'm, I'm 
but barring some kind of unforeseen, like legendary one in a million collapse, um, Cedar Crest is going to make the playoffs this year. They're definitely the best team in the field, Pennsylvania, and the only team I would feel certain should at least make the playoffs. I'm going to predict them to go seven and three, in fact, and get that critical buy. Because if you go seven and three or better, you have a uh, sorry, not buy, but a winner's bracket. You, you get you can you have two losses in the playoff phase before you're knocked out in uh the if you go seven and three or better we're six and four you are in sudden death the whole way um danny is the heart and soul of this team he's been one of the best players in the state for many years um and he's just great um he's one of the pa quiz bowl legends and uh if i was going to make uh you know our our all decade team for the, the 10 years or so i've been involved in it danny would be on that team um for sure he powers a lot um he gets a lot of questions in literature and history and so on great humanities player um not a science player but other than that he can compete across the whole distribution and the other guys are very good too um sam got an honorable mention this year um with the all-state teams um teams good brothers from zach uh so yeah it, it's a good team all around where everybody's going to be contributing at least 10 15 points a game and that's pretty key I really like to value that when it comes to higher difficulties, including national, because it allows Danny to have a somewhat worse game than average at a certain time, but potentially be carried with four gets um, from his teammates or something like that, that allows him to maybe not be uh, playing at superstar level every single match, at least until the playoff phase. Uh, it gives them a higher floor, I guess I mean to say, than some of the other teams in Pennsylvania this year. So I'm going to say seven and three, uh, making the winner's bracket. And I think they will get three playoff wins. I'm going to be optimistic. That would take them to around 30th, tied to 30th in the country. And I think that's a pretty good uh, level. The best team from Pennsylvania since 2016 has always gone at least tied 30. Um, and I do think, you know, if you compare them to last year's Great Valley or um, 2020 Township, which unfortunately didn't get to play because of the pandemic, or 2018 STEM, or some of the other teams in there um, that were like elite in Pennsylvania, I don't think they quite match up the, the points per game and the power rates are just a little behind those teams, but not by a lot. So if those teams were finishing in the tied for teens for the most part, um, I'm going to say, one step below that, three playoff wins is a pretty solid playoff prediction for Cedar Crest. So there we go, seven and three, three playoff wins. Next, we're going to go to Carlisle. Uh, Carlisle uh, played Angus and last year and went five and five after qualifying through the Capital Area League. They had not played any um, Saturday tournaments and still did really well. Um, this year, we saw them play one invitational tournament, Mannheim Township, on an A set. Um, it didn't go that well for them in terms of win loss record. And they only had about 16 points per bonus on an A set, which is not predictive of particularly strong national success. I think they graduated a very good player um, last year. Um, so I don't think I'm going to say they'll do as well as they did last season, but I think four and six for Carlisle is a pretty good prediction. Um, they'll acquit themselves perfectly fine. And there are plenty of teams in their range that are going to this tournament. And the nature of the card system will mean they'll play a lot of those teams, um, especially later on in the in the uh, preliminary round. So I think four and six for Carlisle. Wissahickon. Wissahickon is another team that went five and five last year at HSNCT. And uh, they did pretty well. There's their bonus conversion, especially, and their their power stats were like really good for a five and five team, especially one that at that point hadn't had as much experience. This year, they've got a lot more experience. Um, they played some out of state events against some very good fields. The win loss record really uh, wasn't there in early on, but they've started to do a little better at those recently. Um, Really, there's three teams, and we'll get to them too, but Wissahick and Mannheim Township and Downtown Stem are very close in my mind. They've all played out of state. They've all gotten that experience. They all did pretty well in state when they played. Um, and so they're all going to be like right on that playoff cut line. Um, 
And I think they'll all get in because they have that experience. Um, and I think with the Hicken, it's another one of those teams where it's not particularly strong on one player for the deep scoring. A lot of them do pretty well. And it seems like the scoring is spread out. So I'm going to say six and four for Wissahickon this year. They will break through that playoff barrier, um, which is exciting. That'll be the first time Wissahickon's made the playoff, which is a T ever. Um, but I don't think they'll get a playoff win. I think I think they'll six and four, and then they'll get that one playoff game. Mainheim Township, I am making the same prediction. Same. Uh, I'd say I'm a little more confident in Wissahickon getting there, and I'd say. I think Wissahickon's a little more likely to get in the playoff, a little more likely to get a playoff win because Township really is um, their A team. I should say they have three teams going. Their A team really is Kevin. Like Kevin is doing most of the power scoring there. He is the one that is getting the, the good buzzes in, and he is the one that is really putting up the numbers. So if he has a funky game late on in the tournament, um, you know, it, it could hurt them. That being said, they are impeccably coached by uh, Missy Dahl Oster, who uh, coaching legend in Pennsylvania. And this is her last um, year before she uh, hands over the keys to somebody new at Mannheim Township. Uh, what more could you achieve in a career? Uh, I mean, two GPQB full state titles, uh, a PSAC title for what that's worth. Um you know, uh, countless wins, countless great teams, coach so many kids to an all state to mention. I, I can't believe that, that they won't make the playoffs. I will not allow my body to believe that in her last year. Um, so I think they will will uh will make it six and four. I don't think they'll win a playoff game. Um if you look at how they've done at those out of state tournaments, the the win loss record has not been there for those, but um that's win loss record against teams that are like playing. They're going to be the teams are playing in the playoffs at nationals, not the teams that are going to be playing early on the prelims at nationals. So that six and four for the A team. Um, Manhattan Township B is just kind of the classic four and six B team from a very established, long running school that's going there to get experience and become the A team next year. It's a four and six there, and I'll go three and seven for their C team. Um, same same kind of concept. Usually those teams are, are not ones you're right home about, but I you know, again, like I mentioned with Berwick B, um, even if they don't do that well, they're gonna have a ton of fun, they're gonna get a lot of experience, they're gonna bond with their friends. So I'm glad they're going. Uh so that takes us now to uh the Chester County teams. Um Chester County being the county where I was raised and uh, lived for a while again between grad school and where I'm in Philadelphia now and will be living again starting in August. So fun. Uh, farthest north is Great Valley. One team this year. Um, Great Valley. Uh, I'm going to mention actually Great Valley and Henderson kind of together as a group in the way that I kind of feel like Wissahickon, Mannheim Township, and Stammer are a group. Great Valley and Henderson have had decent stats, kind of similar to the other three teams when they were playing each other in the fall a lot, but they didn't play much after that. They did not travel to New Jersey um, to, to play these, these strong fields. They did not get that experience in. So, I think that that's going to hurt. Um, Great Valley has a pretty strong lineup. Um, I mean, both Luca and Travis um, were were second team um, this year. I mean, they're 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 pretty deep, but they just don't they just haven't played enough. Um, and against tough enough competition, I mean, a lot of their appearances were A sets. Um, for me to feel confident in going to that playoff level. So I'm going to say five and five. And really, I mean, I'm breaking the North to South thing. Everything I just said applies to Henderson too. It really is. James and Forum are both really good players. Um, the re other guys on the team will score some. And they actually have very good statistics. Henderson's also sending their B team. Um, but 
Uh, and their B team is actually probably the best B team in the state this year. I'm going to say five and five for both Henderson teams, in fact. Um, they have a lot of depth, but they just they, they didn't play anything after January other than the county league, and that barely counts because of the nature of that format. It's not it's not that applicable to HSNCT. Um, and when they come up against really seasoned national teams that have played four invitationals in the last five months, and Henderson's played zero, or Great Valley's played, I think, played one, these teams are going to struggle. So I'm saying five and five for all those guys. Um, STEM actually did play in New Jersey quite a bit over the spring. Um, they've got three teams, sorry, three players that got a uh, GPQB honorable mention or higher this year instead of two. And I think that extra experience will pay off. And I think that they will make the playoffs. And I actually looked at the stats and the win-loss record in those fields, and they're doing considerably better than Wissahickon and Township on things like principal bonus. Um, I think that suggests they're a little bit deeper than the two of them. And that's why I'm going to say downtown STEM will get a playoff win. One, just the one. But they'll be a one playoff win team this year as opposed to a zero win playoff win team. So they'll finish second highest to the Pennsylvania teams is my prediction. Okay. That covers um everything I had about the predictions this year. Again, not as many teams were active this year, not as many events. So uh, hopefully that will start to bounce back in the next year. But I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun. Um, I'll, I'll be reading uh, a lot of other people you've seen in Pennsylvania tournaments and know well will be reading. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing everybody there and uh, catching up with all the friends. And good luck to all the Pennsylvania teams. Prove me wrong. I want everybody to do better than I said. Uh, hopefully we'll have seven of them in the Super 7, although that would be, uh, that'll never happen. But I, I can wish anyway, can't I? All right. Happy buzzing, and I'll see you at HSMPT.